All right, today we're going to check out Speedy Bee's new offering, the Speedy Bee 20x20 stack and ESC combo. It's the Speedy Bee F405 Mini. You can either get it as a stack combination with an ESC paired with it or separately, where you can get the ESC separately or the flight controller just by itself. It being a fully featured 20x20 stack, it is targeted towards racing or anywhere from a 3 inch to a 5 inch quad lightweight build. With an incredible price point, you just can't pass up. So ever since the release of the Speedy B F3 version of their flight controllers, that was the F7 V3 version and also the F405 V3 version. Those were both 30 by 30 stacks. And if you hop on over to the Betaflight page, betaflight.com, and go to the stats page, you can see they're crushing it. Um, basically, that F405 version uh, was an incredible price point, and you can see it is one of the most or the most built target in Betaflight currently for... Uh, the last uh, I don't know, couple weeks, at least this has been like this for a long time now, these stats. So yeah, they're crushing it. Great performance on that. Great price point. Feature rich. And this 20 by 20 stack that we're going to take a look at here is essentially the same feature rich uh, stack that you have in the 30 by 30 F405, just in a you know smaller package. Before we unbox this puppy, let's take a look at the user manual. Well, that's a thing right there. It comes with a great user manual and see some of the features that this stack has over some of its competitors. So as described before, it is a 20 by 20 stack. It comes partnered with a 35 amp BL Heli S ESC. You can either flash Blue Jay on that or other open source variants that would go uh, pairing with the BL Heli S firmware. Again, any open source ESC firmware, you'd be able to flash to this flight controller. It's the eight or 16 bit it's the, not the 32-bit variants, it's the BL S variant, which I can't remember if that's 8 or 16-bit. You can see some of the dimensions right here, and on these hole sizes here, you actually get an assortment of gummies and screws that you can use to either be a 2mm or 3mm screw sizes for whatever your frame is supporting. Overall stack height, 13mm, so not too bad, pretty, pretty tight. As always, Speedy B hooks you up, so let's take a look at what we actually get here in the packet. You can see here the flight controller in the ESC, which we're going to take a really close look at second. But we're at kind of some of the peripherals. That's kind of what makes it a little different as well. So pulling this off, you can see we get a full assortment of screws. This is all your M2 gear. So you're going to get these uh, little spacer washers, uh, the, the little gummies that go in the stack itself and some nice long M2 screws here that you can use uh, two different lengths there. Same thing for the uh, M3, nice assortment. You got some spacers here, some nice long M2 screws, uh, again here as well, and then some gummies here uh, to use with that. Finally, for the ESC itself, you're gonna get your uh, XT30 connector, so that's a little different. So if you're looking to use it on a five inch, you might want to, you know, pick up an XT60 for that. Get a little loom here to connect into your, your flight controller to your ESC. And then it is a 35 volt, 470 microfarad uh, capacitor here that you can, uh, of course, solder up to your ESC connector there or your battery connector. So you might be thinking what I thought is like, why do I only get one thing? Well, it, the, the other ones are on it already. So you, so you get an extra spare for the 20 by 20 right there. So yeah, you're not getting gypped on the uh, little gummies there. Now they're just on it already. Now I'll drop this link down below to the user manual. You can see basically the run through of what I just talked about there. And you can even get little pictures of what you're gonna get in the package, which essentially is just what I talked about here. So yeah, it's all in the user manual. Check it out. Taking a look at the connectors, we're going to have the suite of connectors that you're going to get from the normal that you would kind of expect from your ESC. So it's going to include battery voltage. It's going to assume current draw and then one through four motors, of course, grounding. It's interesting here. There's also an NA. Uh, yes, yeah, so it looks like here that's going to get you some telemetry. So probably ESC telemetry is what I would guess. And this is the big thing I love with Speedy B and these V3 versions of these flight controllers is they are not given any compromises on what they're delivering for features. Even to the point that we have the DA and CL or SDA and SCL connectors for GPS, which may be pretty important going forward, especially considering remote ID, although it would still work. But if you want a GPS and compass, you're going to need that SDL and SCA pads on this 20 by 20 stack. You will have those. So you'll be able to get enhanced uh, GPS functionality. Uh, I would assume this will get a 
uh, target on INAV if you want to use that. And beta flight uh, seems to me in the direction as long as you know people still keep, keep engaged with it is going to add more and more features, especially cons probably considering remote ID for GPS, you know, position hold, altitude hold, things like that, which you most likely, I would think at some point here for the most um, advanced GPS features, you're going to need that compass on board. And it's just nice that they're not compromising for that. And you're still going to have those plugs. And in addition to the full complement of features, don't forget you have that Bluetooth antenna and you can use this along with the Speedy BD app, of course, for any in the field adjustments or configuration changes that, you know, you just might have forgot to set something. You can quickly pull up your phone, connect to it and make that quick adjustment. Some, you know, some stuff you can't hit in the OSD and uh, this gives you just quick access. It does have also a little additional feature here, this little LED level indicator. It's not that, uh, so it's, yeah, whatever. The Bluetooth is pretty useful, this LED thing, yeah, whatever. But uh, I appreciate that, and I appreciate also that they're not dropping off black box. You get eight megs of black box flash, uh, which is plenty. I mean, that's plenty to catch a flight if you're having an issue. Uh, it's only going to be one flight that you'll probably be able to catch with it, but you'll be able to catch a, a one full flight at a 2K recording rate to look at any noise, stuff like that. So 8 meg is enough. I just need some sort of black box. So if I have any issue, I can take a peek and see what it's at and not just be guessing. Uh, USB-C port, of course, which is always nice to get rid of those micro USBs. So that's great. And then we'll have to check out this gyro. I have not flown a, uh, a flight controller yet with this newer IMC or newer to me, at least this ICM 42688P. I know Betaflight, uh, some of the devs were, you know, working on getting that to be equivalent to everything else. We'll have to load it up and take a look and see what performance we'll get. Some things that are a little bit more standout than the competitors, it has an onboard TVS diode to help uh, filter out any electrical noise from the ESC coming back into the flight controller. You have a five volt, two amp BEC, and then you have a nine volt, three amp BEC, which is a little larger than the fray. And let's not forget that the F405, although it was not as fast as the F7 flight controller, actually has more flash space. So this thing is going to, is somewhat, I don't know if I would say it's future proofed, but it's gonna have a nice long life with that F405 because it actually has more flash space than an F7. Uh, not as much speed as the F7, but a 4K or 8K, you can run 8K on this, maybe even with the RPM filter. Yeah, I don't know, it might get a little touchy, but 4K with the RPM filter or 8K, 8K for the, the PID loop rate if you're just running that dynamic notch, which I run the dynamic notch all by itself many times without the RPM filter. Of course, if you're new to FPV, it is always nice for this user manual to show you how to wire things up. So they do include that, shows you all the different configurations for any um, in any of the uh, cameras that you got analog and or any of the receivers that you have, how to wire those up. And then the same thing for digital, for GPS, and then DJI Air units or analog VTXs. So another selling feature in the product materials, it is says that it's doing some extra work to clean up that electrical for the gyro signal to make sure you're not getting electrical noise uh, falsely uh, being triggered and kind of jitter in the gyro signal and motor noise. And it can be a big deal. you got to have clean electrical to your gyro, especially on the larger quads. And that's where these 20 by 20 boards uh, typically fall short. It's one is ESC durability and secondly, just the amount of filtering uh, on the electrical system uh, is not enough to, you know, in the larger quad classes, which is like the five inch for these kind of 20 by 20s, like on the three inches, they do okay, but on the five inches, nah. so it looks like Speedy B uh, is claiming at least to put in some additional work on this to really clean up. So the TVS diode, this, you know, renowned supposedly max linears LOD power uh, supply chip uh, to receive uh, independent power for the gyro boosting surge protection capacity up to 320%. So we'll see, you know, the proof is in the pudding. I'm gonna put this on a quad and see how it looks. Mm -hmm. And finally, they pulled together this little comparison of some of the other contenders out there. So you got the Mamba, the Sky Star, um, yeah, some other 20 by 20 stacks in here that they're comparing to, and you can see how the Speedy B F405 Mini stacks up compared to those. I would say the main features out of here to draw your attention to, because some of them are bleh, but uh, some of the main features out of here, I would say you got three amps on the nine volt rail. Uh, this is a 10 volt, two amp, but nevertheless, uh, three amps on this one. Um, you also have here that they're saying that the GPS will be powered 
um, when you're powering the flight controller via USB, which is which honestly is kind of nice. Um, so you can power that up and check it out on the on the on the bench on the desk. The TVS diode uh, is on there as well, in addition to the other pieces that I talked about, and then the Bluetooth. This uh, you know motor direction changing wirelessly, you know whatever. But uh, and again, battery indicator level, you know. Uh, you can see most of the stuff down below here is uh, about the same, so you're getting about the same on there. But the main point here is, I think the price point, 60 bucks for a 20 by 20 stack. And then if you buy the ESC and flight controller separately, because if something breaks, or you crash or whatever, it's $31, $32 for each individually. So pretty competitive price point, a fully featured 20 by 20 stack for sure. So hopefully this helps. Here they are live and in the flesh. I'm gonna go ahead and load this up on a five inch race rig that I have, and we're gonna put it to the bones, give it a test, see how she does on black box. As you can see, I don't have it loaded just yet, so you'll have to subscribe to come back for that video, uh, hopefully here within the next week. If you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to drop them down below. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you know that Speedy B's V3, the 30 inch stack, is my favorite flight controller. Just feature rich and just the right price point. Uh, I've been looking for something that just doesn't make any compromises and Speedy B is definitely making that happen. I think they're doing the same here with this 20 by 20 stack. I think it's a great price point and all the features are there. Fingers crossed that the uh, you know real life uh, noise testing on it and putting on the five inch rig and giving her the bones really uh, pans out. It had on the V3 version with the TVS diode, it had on the 405 version as well. So hopefully they've figured that stuff out and have it lift here on the 20 by 20 as well. But again, if you wanna see that and you don't wanna miss it, hit the subscribe button down below. Thanks everybody, and I hope this helped.